Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Hell's Rebels, episode 10. Uh, I should have it set up so the, the heroes or the players can hear the music. So, uh, anybody in the chat and Twitch, mm. please let me know if the sound is too loud or too quiet, and I'll and I'll fix it. And also let me know if I'm too loud or too quiet. So let's see now. Uh, last time we played, the group finished book one, and they found out that some citizens had been captured by Thrun's people, and they had set up some more of those excruciations, which is like public humiliation, where they make dog houses with like knives in them, and you have to live in it for a week, and if you want food, you have to crawl over to, like, where these dogs are chained up, and you have to snatch the food away from the dogs. And so a number of the people who were being excruciated were members of a Hell Knight order called the Order of the Torrent. They're good guys, and their job is to rescue people who have been captured. So the group had just hired this new NPC group called the Deplorables. And the Deplorables were... Dutch Schaefer, Ice Cold Stan Boston, Mason Spatham, the Transportationer, and Cobra Omnibus Nightmare Stalobra. Right? So the Deplorables, the Dependables, and the Heroes went in and teamed up and tipped over like a scaffold and freed, I think, three of the people who were being excruciated, caused mass chaos and. I think Jason Spatham was doing crank and he, one of the dogs, he injected a dog with crank or something. And um, the group got away, but Dutch Schaefer said something like, that's what you get for messing with the silver ravens. And the group was kind of mad about that because they don't, they don't want their notoriety to go up. But because of this incident, on the screen right above me, you will see the Rebellion stats. Their notoriety did go up. It's now at 10 out of 100. Once you get to 100, um, that's when Thrun's forces sweep the city, start killing people, and looking for the Silver Ravens to just kill them and wipe them out. So the group actually hit rank 7 last time. They have a total of 58 supporters. The treasury, as far as I can tell on my scribblings, it's 1,222 gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, your teams are the Fuji Sisters, they're Kenku, like bird people, Tracy Timbernock, the Queen of Values, the School for Girls, the High School Girls, Thieves Guild, and the Dependables. Elderly, but still powerful action heroes. <laughs> so, we should start by doing the Rebellion stuff. Alright. So, like, the first thing we need to do is Fio needs to make a loyalty check. Okay, loyalty check, and is there any new... There wasn't any change in... Nope, okay. So it was plus seven, right? Yeah. And then, whatever my... Oh, my stuff is new. Seven. Okay. Plus seven, that is a 24. Oh, we made it. Oh man, I have Photoshop running. I should turn that off. Oh no. Oh, the great beast. <laughs> yeah. That's how <laughs> awesome OBS is. Like, I got Photoshop. Like, XSplit would melt my face yeah. if that happened. All right. Photoshop is the worst for that. You made your check. Now, a couple things, I think. First, you lose D6 supporters. Mm hmm. But because of one of the things you did, I think you gained a D6. So let me, I'll just roll your loss. You lost three okay. and you gained two. So you actually, you lost one. So you have lost 57 one. followers. Someone didn't like, uh, didn't like the new dog. So they left. <laughs> uh, your notoriety is a 10. Uh, You've got your treasury to cover all your stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So now because you're ranked seven, a couple things changed. You have three rebellion actions. Plus, I think one of you grants the group a fourth one as well. Also, you gain a boon. You had already gained a plus one to one skill. Now you gain another plus one to a skill. All right. So you can go ahead and apply that. Your your work in the rebellion 
has honed your skills literally. Oh boy. This is honestly oh, a dangerous game to give me. Ooh. I haven't pushed any noise buttons yet. I'll be pushing noise buttons soon, everybody. Alright, cut some skill. The spell noises. There's all these spell noises in Sirenscape. Mm. I think I heard the magic missile one before. You're gonna hear oh. Oh. We don't need those, <laughs> we just need shovel noises. Sho oh! But nobody casts spells in this mm. The shovel noise, yeah! Oh. I, uh... There's a couple noises that I won't play because they sound a little... Question. Oh yes, I, I, the we, exertion we, noises yes, are a little. Uh, really bad. <laughs> Can we please play them? I feel like we Let's take a vote. I feel like oh. the audience needs to hear it. I'm real tired. Uh, you know, I, I think a part of me wanted to play them. Maybe that's why I brought it up. Oh, well, let me scroll up here. And find... Those rebels just got NC17, everybody. <laughs> Surprise us! Surprise us at the most inopportune time, Sean. No, oh, I, I think I got to do it right now. Sprinkle that through the. Uh, Sprinkle it. Through it. I mean, we turn have a little salt. Turn up like the it. volume here. Uh. All right, so let's just start with a victorious laugh. Tell me if you can hear this. <laughs> you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Actually, here's the rogue unsheathing. Here's a fast unsheath. <laughs> a rapier slash. A rapier Ooh. pierce. Dagger throw. Uh, how about a dagger pierce? Sneak attack. Oh. This is Ash's oh, noise. How Ooh, about, what are you making a master strike? Yeah. Uh, is there a sound for something ineffectively hitting armor? I mean, what do you have for raw? <laughs> just like have just like a thud. Oh, oh very. Wait, 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 just oh. A <laughs> Yeah. No, I, they don't. That's too bad. Here's a Was laugh. A shield block? A shield block? Mm, probably. They should have a shield block. Here's thoughtful. Hmm. Growl. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right, you ready, everybody? Here we go. Yeah, let's do this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got it? There, you did it. I'm five. I'm gonna tell you. Here's a jumping noise. One more exertion, ready? Oh my god. That's not so bad. Okay. Alright, there you go. Hell's Rebels, please don't stop watching. We're done. <laughs> What are you saying? They're going to start watching. This is how we sell it. <laughs> the whole audience has changed. It's a completely different... It's a completely different RPGM, set of RPGM, hello. No. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, you got to do some... Uh, here we go with the rebellion actions. All right. In our activity phase. We have a... Oh boy! Now you've upgraded one of your team. The Dependables are now infiltrators. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you upgraded the Queen as well. Mm -hmm. You got all sorts yep. of stuff going here. All right, so you got to do four of these. So try to try to remember the ones that you want to do as I read them. Okay. Uh, change officer role. Uh, do you have spies? We have. Do, do we have spies? School. We've upgraded everybody except for, I think, the Fuchi sisters, so... I don't think we have spies yet, I think spies... Oh, alright, that's yes, right, the girls are... We have all four categories. Yeah. Girls are rumor, rumor mongers. Mm -hmm. Those are the girls, the rumor mongers. Uh -huh. We've got, I think, whatever the first level thieves are, sneaks. Mm -hmm. Infiltrators. The Fuchi sisters. sisters. You have sneaks, they're just sneaks. And then the traitor is a merchant, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, gotcha. All right, here we go. Um, dismiss a team. Uh, earn gold. Uh, gather information. Guarantee an event. That's where I roll on the event chart. Um, 
buy low, recruit supporters, recruit a team, reduce Didn't danger. We do an, did we do an action to do the rescue action last time? Like, I, I'm just trying to remember, like, last time, because it's been a while. Uh, that was an we, event. Well, no, actually, that was an event from the adventure. So. Oh, okay. So I thought that was like a rescue. Okay. Refresh the marketplace and see see if there's new magic items for you to buy. Yeah, a lot of gold. Let's see here. So, uh, secure a cache. You can arrange for a cache of equipment to be hidden somewhere in Kentargo. Um, spread disinformation. Upgrade a team. Uh, and that's it. So you get four. What do you want to do? Can we spread disinformation that it wasn't actually the Silver Ravens that was mentioned at the recent event? It was the Golden Geese. <laughs> oh, really? You're gonna, oh, okay. Golden <laughs> Geese? All right. So you want the school for girls, the rumor mongers, to... Uh, go throughout the city and try to spread blame on somebody else. Mm -hmm. So someone will need to make a secrecy check. It's our Get a plus thing. two to that. Is that me? Is that my thing? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think what do you I mind? Just add a plus five? Plus five? Yeah, I think so. Hey, what does it use? Dex? And then we get, what, a plus two for our proficiency? Uh, like yeah. All right, so I'm at a six. Oh, a whopping eight. Okay. If you fail the check by five or more, your notoriety score is increased by D6. He yelled it really loud. <laughs> he just, like, yelled yeah, the it. girls are like really unconvincing. Do you guys hear about the golden gooses or whatever? <laughs> it's not the silver ravens, it's the golden gooses. I'm just kidding, it's the silver ravens. <laughs> they got are these they old walk. guys, these action heroes. They're pretty cool. Are they say are 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 the girls saying they're part of the Silver Ravens now, just to like get their cred up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. girls, come I'm on, a, no. I'm a Silver Raven. Oh, of course. So you gained four to your is. notoriety. <gasps> so you have a fourteen now. I shall sip my oh. mint tea in anguish. Oh, <gasps> that's illegal, by the way. All right, that was Crazy. one activity. What else would you like to do? Uh, I'm not making any more suggestions, so. Should we just, like, <laughs> followers, maybe? Get that. Yeah, gain more followers. Yeah. Always, always be recruiting. Supporters. All right, let's see. Come on. Come on, new dice. So, Fio, usually you do this by going to the three-legged devil. Mm hmm When you go there this time, you notice there's some people. I mean, most people are, like, super pumped to see you. Mm hmm There's a few that are kind of watching you with steely eyes. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do your performance? Yes. As good All as right. By mm -hmm. spending an amount of gold equal to your minimum value, so you got to spend 70 gold. I mean, my performance... Fio's performances are not cheap. Okay. They're, they're Eurovision-esque, so... Okay. You know. Do you want to take that out of your treasury, or are you using your personal money? I'll use personal money, and that, that's fine. Okay. We have so much. All right. So All right, a that... loyalty check. Plus seven. Yeah. Dirty 20. All right, you did it. On a successful check, increase the Rebellion supporters by 2d6. Do you want to roll it, or do you want me to roll it? Um, I'll roll a 2d6 for those. Come on, please. Plus, please, any please. bonuses granted by recruiter officers. I don't know. If you... I don't think we... So it's a total of six. All right, so you now have 63 supporters. Brad. All right. That's two. Oh, and after you, when you after you go on rapping, Athak goes on. You're going to see me later tonight again. Peep it, everybody! Come to the peep it. That's because last time we played rapping <laughs> Athak, there's a pit trap, oh, and I no. peed in it, and we decided we're gonna fill it with pee. Every time we rest in the dungeon, we're gonna come back to the pee pit, and we're gonna take a pee. I've have I apologized to the audience yet? I feel like... <laughs> and then we're thinking about having other pits filled with different fluids. Like, mm -hmm. one pit is the one we cry over. So that's going to be filled oh. with our tears. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Those kinds of fluids. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously. One one of them is going to be filled with just dismembered arms, and it's going to be the armpit. Mm. <laughs> that should has to happen. <laughs> one of them will just have a bunch of shaved orange rind, and it'll be the Paul Pit. Oh, that's. I don't know about that one. <laughs> one of them will be filled with a bunch of dead roosters. It'll be the cockpit. Oh, okay. I didn't go NC-17 with that <laughs> one, like, but I could have. I didn't restraint, do it. Restraint. <laughs> we should probably do that. The cockpit. Uh, it'll probably but happen. For real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, be, let's not beat around the bush here. Okay. You, you've got two more. All right. The deployables are sitting at the table with you. Focus, damn it! <laughs> There's not much time. Enough of this can we, um, nonsense. Can we rescue more people with the de the dependables? You want to rescue more? We're missing that one. We, I think you we said that there. there's still people that are. Um, we didn't get all of them. Laria Longroad, one of your NPC allies, says. Well, actually, I have a lead on that, and um, once you're done here with your rebellion business, I might have something for you soon. Okay. Rescuing... I'm, I'm tracking down the location of where the rest of the Order of the Torrent is, including their leader, Octavio Sabinus. All right. So, can we... Uh... I guess is there any way to like earn gold or items um right? or reduce items uh, reduce the cost of items or something like that there was a gold one we could upgrade we earn could gold. still continue to upgrade our, our groups right yes yeah maybe we could earn gold and then see if we could spend that on upgrading some of our groups yeah, earn gold what... would be roll a security check and multiply the result by your tier the result of this check is how many gold pieces you earn for the week. All right. Um, so, yeah, you multiply by seven. So. All right. Well, why don't I try that? All right. Tracy Timbernock says, We've earned some gold. Let me look through and see how much. So a security check is... Um, plus two. I think one of you has a... An extra bonus to security checks, depending. But on is that the one that's done with strength or? Yeah. Um. I think, all right, so I can add my strength bonus to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. So it's you one plus SC my strength bonus. Two. Two. Mm -hmm. I thought that was for loyalty checks. Um, yeah, but for secondary checks, when you rank three through five, it's plus one. Once you hit rank six, it went to plus two. Okay, cool. Uh, 17. This is my d20 roll. Math time. 17 times 7. 117. Okay. So, 117. No. Wait. No, that's not right. That, like, four times all the time? 70 plus 49. One hundred and nineteen. One hundred and nineteen. Yeah. All right. Um. So that's looking like one, three. Yeah, okay, got it. Are we almost at plate armor time? <laughs> oh, we're so. I think we can. You are I close. Think... You are very close. How much was plate armor? Fifteen hundred, have... right? I think we have fifteen hundred. We have twelve hundred in the slush fund, which is not covered by our. I. We. We haven't put all of our money into the Silver Ravens treasury, as far yeah. as I can tell. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put that. This money we have... just had is supposed to go right into the treasury. So yeah. I did. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To, um... Um, for the next one, do, what level did we have um, our traders at? Were they level one or were they level two? Our what? The merchant? Our trader? Our merchant. Yeah, yeah traders. The merchant was at level two. We if could we, make her into like a level three. If level three, like special orders of high cost items, can be shipped at a slight discount. So yes. that would be something we can get you well, good armor. You got an option. We need to bring those prices down. 
You yeah. can turn her into, into either a black marketer or a merchant lord. I feel like she sounds like a merchant lord, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see here. Because the black marketeer allows us to sell items at a higher profit, but merchant nah. lords, they can bring them in. And I do have see, some... Uh, merchant. Uh, merchants can earn gold for the Silver Ravens, or they can move magic items through the marketplaces of Kintargo to bring in new stock. A black marketer, a black marketeer, are similar to merchants, save that they maintain contacts with illegal sources and operate in the city's shadows, allowing you to sell items at a slightly higher profit. That's pretty good. This special order is pretty good. So what do you want to do? Let's you want to um, do upgrade her to that, the one that lets us get special items at a discount. Mm-hmm. Special items at a discount. So wait, merchant or merchant lord? Merchant lord. Merchant lord. All right. She's a merchant lord. Yeah, um, one of my rivals unexpectedly had a heart attack, and then uh, I bought a lot of their inventory, so... Hmm. Yeah. Goodbye. Okay. Did, did, <laughs> did you sell any of those mint packets yet? Maybe I gotta go. Goodbye. You shouldn't be talking about the mint packets. There's more important things to do now in the city of Kintargo. I feel like that's arguable, but okay. All right. So the deplorables get up from the table to leave, and Dutch goes, We'll be back. And he says goodbye. All right. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> wait, wait, are you are you leaving the chopper, Dutch? What's the isn't chopper? That what gonna, what, isn't that what we're going to call the wasp's nest now? Oh! Chopper. Chopper. Yeah, don't worry. We'll get back yeah. to the chopper when it's we just, time. Yeah, we just we just don't tell Dutch the name of the business. We just gonna yell it out. And, like, <laughs> Everything has a code name. <laughs> Everything has a code name. We all have code names. Just so. Okay. Yeah. All right, that ends the Hell's Rebels Rebellion stat stuff. Now we get into Turn of the Torrent Book Two. Yes. All right. Um, your friend Rexus Victor Cora had done some translating. He sits down at the table just to tell you some stuff that he learned. Um, let's see here. He tells you about 80 years ago, the Silver Ravens had a leader. Her name was Jack Daw. Um, over time, the Silver Ravens became disorganized and fractured. And they splintered into faction groups, some of which were evil and did bad things. Uh one of them, actually, at the time, they tried to abduct the mayor's son at the time. And it was a hell knight named Rhea Nal Nalvanetti came and rescued the son. And that hell knight founded the Order of the Torrent, who still exists to this day. And they continue to rescue people who were captured and do that kind of thing. There was a kind of a famous splinter group called the Grey Spiders. Uh, who actually had a kidnapping ring. And they ended up assassinating Rhea Nalvanetti, the founder of the Order of the Torrent. But the rest of the Torrent drove off the Grey Spiders, and the spiders fled into some caves and presumably were slaughtered long ago. At this time in the city, the Order of the Torrent only has 23 members. But Bars Lythroon has been seemingly trying to just wipe them out. So, here's another Sirenscape thing. So, Bars Lythroon issues a new proclamation throughout the city. You're all fully healed. Okay. They actually have a recording of the proclamation. Ooh. So, tell me if this is too loud or too quiet. Here's a... Here's just a test sound. Ready? I can pay you in the morning. If you want, I can give you my cloak. <laughs> is that okay? Sounds like rapping out. <laughs> <laughs> is that too loud or too quiet or is it okay I think that's fine that's okay 
Okay, here's the proclamation. You ready? Proclamation the ninth. By mm. order of Lord Mayor Barzillai Thrun, the Congress of Hell Knights, known as the Order of the Torrent, is from this day forward strict of its charter. All of its holdings and possessions are confiscated, its privileges and entitlements revoked, and its members declared outlaws. Steadfast citizens are commanded to turn over those members who have slipped the net of justice. Got it? Yep. This guy sounds like he needs a shovel to the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I can show you what Bar's light through looks like. He looks like, like a more jerky, like, omen drawn national. He's got a flaming mace. That's a good description, actually. Yeah. Jerky omen drawn. <laughs> oh, well. Evil so, omen. He definitely needs a shovel to the face. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that new proclamation, the Order of the Torrent has been stripped of its charter and they are outlaws. And anyone who sees them is expected to turn them in. And if you if you are caught harboring one of them, you're going to be fined 500 gold. All right. So uh, another thing that comes out is there's a, a the Bleak Bridge uh, is one of the bridges in the city. And the toll was three copper. And they jack up the price to five silver to cross the bridge. Oh, people are not happy about that. And Larry, a long road approaches all of you and says, so there's someone who wants to talk to you. Um, her name is Citrona Sabinus. She runs the tooth and nail, which is a bar in old Kintargo. Uh, apparently she's somehow related to the guy who runs the order of the torrent. His name is Octavio Sabinus. Um, this might be good. May imagine if we could get the Order of the Torrent on our side. Imagine if we can get a bar on our side. Yes. Yeah. Another one. I guess. So it would have us. It would have us save us the uh, legwork of having to track them down. So yes, yeah, so let's talk. When do you want to go there? During the day or uh, in the evening? Mm. Let's go during the day then, because mm -hmm. it doesn't break curfew. That's unnecessary cool. issues. I mean, are we recognized at this point? Like, are, are we starting to like have to really like disguise ourselves when we go out, or no? Um, Fio probably, but Fio's kind of famous for singing and performing. Yeah, I think I've been disguising but when we like attack stuff, but. I think Fio actually performed when the Deplorables made their epic explosive attack. Oh, I was, I was pretending to be what's her name, yeah. Nox or whatever oh, it was. Oh, right, you were Nox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they have no idea that I'm, I'm not just agitating things. Okay. I have resummoned Phantom, but because mm -hmm. he can be a little dramatic, he's he looks like a skeleton uh, cat right uh, now. <laughs> All right. Because he died the that last doesn't... time. Wait, oh, that's not no. dramatic. <laughs> That doesn't draw attention at all. <laughs> no, all right. He likes to be melodramatic after he gets, uh, you know, injured enough in battle to have to oh, disapparate, oh. and so he comes back as a skeleton. I'm just like, <sighs> again. All right. So yeah. So yeah, Fio is gonna take um, the pseudo dragon with her because it's like it matches her stuff. It's just equally as like ostentatious. Okay. It's like her weird cat. Blasadria is um, out in the city. Oh God. Looking that's first, right. um, Ash said wanted Blasadria to find someone, so she's out there looking. So you're going to go there? To the tooth and nail? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. It's a single-story tavern marked by nothing but a wooden post outside with four bent and rusty nails and six wolves' teeth hammered into its weathered face. The tavern shares the building with a confectioner's shop identified by the words Sweet Tooth painted at its entrance on Toos Alley. So there's two entrances. You can go into the bar entrance or the confectioner's shop entrance. What do you want to do? Split the party. <laughs> confectioner's Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Effect, probably let's go. Bought. Let's go confectionery. Really? Okay. So <laughs> you go in there. There's all sorts of baked goods. 
The woman behind the counter has long black hair, and she's wearing an eye patch. And she welcomes you, and she points out that their, her most popular thing is... It's sort of like... I don't want to say a Pop-Tart, but it's like... I mean, Pop-Tarts It's like a... Like a, sh- like a toaster pastry? Yes. Like a strudel? A pastry, like a right? Strudel? And then there's like white cream strudel? on it. And then there's like blueberries jumped in it, you know? People like those, and they keep buying them. Hmm. So what does she call them? Uh, these are my blueberry tarts. Well, the marketing needs help. Do you have anything with mint in it? <laughs> yeah, we'll work on that. She looks right. No, of course not. What are you crazy? Well, I've got something you might be interested in. We'll talk later. Call them the berry pits. <laughs> the berry pits. Yeah. She looks at you. Hey, if there's a pit yeah, it's with berries. nothing but cherries, it would be the, the cherry, cherry pit. pit. Oh, we're the cherry pit. pit. Mm. You keep doing that. All right. Yep. You're welcome. I'll take one. I'll I take the I'm... sugariest thing you have at the store. Really? The sugariest thing? Yes. Let's see. What's oh. the sugariest thing? I guess it would be... And we're going to feed it to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what about? Let's see. I'm trying to think. What's this? Sh- like a bowl of sugar with chunks taffy. of chocolate in it. <laughs> oh, it's like taffy or like a donut. A donut dipped <laughs> dipped in chocolate, covered in like covered sugar sprinkles. Cream and sprinkles. Fried yeah. Sugar. <laughs> okay. Sugar balls. I'll take one. I'll take <laughs> sugar balls. Sugar balls. <laughs> <laughs> There's, okay. there's a big balls, on, what, on the other hand, I'll take two out. sugar balls. We, we might have to play some sirenscape noises if you eat too many of those sugar balls. So they're, they're they're really hard. It takes a lot of effort <laughs> to really crack well, that. Into crash that off of that sugar well, high. I would say the like, sugar balls oh. like come in like a little sack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe the sack is like edible. <laughs> oh, like with this. It's like rice paper, like like the rice uh. rice candies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in an what effort to see organic, organic sugar, balls? The sugar, balls, the sugar balls come in a nut. Oh come <laughs> on! Oh. <laughs> to appeal to the uh, to the health conscious crowd. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you, get... you know you're totally thinking of health if you're eating that much sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. So you, you buy yourself some sugar balls, <laughs> and you can dip your different like McDonald's. dipping sauces for oh. them. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> At least we eat one of them. So like... hey, you dip them in. Good job, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we want D and D again. <laughs> yeah, Bill will get one of those as well, and just kind of like, <laughs> just just like throw it in her like bag with Vendelfec. It's just like, okay. Can you, can you dip That's them in okay. spice to make them spicy? No, there's no we don't have any spice. Oh, well, actually. <laughs> The, the the queen of values. She had some rare imports from another realm, and I I picked some of this up. <laughs> it's worse that it's physical now. Huh? Now there's now there's a physical thing now. It's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it. I have mine here too. She um, just sighs, resigned. <sighs> <sighs> All right. So she sells you all that delicious food. Is there anything else you want to do in here? Or do you want to move over to the bar side? Well, I'll get some sugar balls to go. And then... <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Maybe a chocolate-covered banana. And then... Oh! <laughs> Head over. <laughs> I'll put it in my bucket with my skull for later. It's... <laughs> Well, Essie, is that banana. a banana in your pocket? Or you oh, just... yeah. <laughs> uh, just put the banana in like, the eye socket of the skull so it doesn't rattle around in the bucket too oh, much. Because okay. I don't have a purse. I just carry a bucket with a skull in it. <sighs> and thus, trick or treating was born in <laughs> Kintana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. All right. So, Lucola Jens like, watches you. Put the banana into the eye socket of the skull. And she sighs. <laughs> okay. 
Bucket loved bananas. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for that's great. Thanks for coming. Okay, go. Are you gonna go to the other side? Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll terrorize this woman enough. <laughs> Getting all sweaty. All right. I'm just gonna say one in the socket's worth two in the hand, isn't it? Okay. Not <laughs> Too far, too far. Not, not I'm true. sorry. I, we we not far enough. Like we come back from PAX and we're just like all just like <laughs> filthy. Like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> all right. So inside, uh, yeah, the, the stink of stale beer, tobacco smoke, and less discernible odors hover in the air like clouds of gnats. Narrow windows stained yellow allow in little natural light, and a few sputtering candles do little to disperse the gloom. The furniture is dilapidated and was of poor quality even on the long-ago day it was fashioned. The common room is nearly empty when you arrive. Uh, you do see uh, an employee, a male human, a lumpish fellow with close-cropped blonde hair. Uh, there's also three other people that are playing a game in here, which your characters probably know. It's a game that people in Kentargo play. So it's basically darts. Oh. It's called Devil Pin. So on the wall, instead of a dart target, there's a devil face. The devil face has blue skin, ivory horns, a yellow nose, and a long red tongue that's forked and it kind of hangs down. And um, basically you start the game with a hell debt of 10 points. You throw darts at it, and each thing is worth different points. And whoever gets to zero first wins. And you play for silver pieces, usually. So there's uh, there's three players in here that are playing right now. There's a guy with a mullet. His name is Mac Jackson. Then there's a beautiful little lady with a long ponytail. Her name is Arielana Grand. And then there's a lady with short hair who's like chewing gum. Her name is Rebby Haxon. She's like, I got this one. They're all throwing darts. So there's three people playing darts. And the employee like looks at another person who looks like she owns this place. Her picture's on the screen. And she looks at you meaningfully and nods. What would you like to do? I'll approach the woman who is meaningfully nodding at us. Mm -hmm. oh, that's no fun. I'm going to go to the bar instead. Mm -hmm. Fun part wasn't part of my job description. Mm -hmm. I want to order a round for everybody in the bar. Okay. Um, Mac Jackson says, thanks, but I don't want to let it mess up my throat. Aralana Grand is like, ooh, thanks. And Rebby Haxon says, you're all right with me, champ. Hey, what are you guys playing there? Mac Jackson says, devil pin, obviously. You don't know the best devil pin players in Guitargo when you see them? I, I could easily beat you at that game, and I don't even know how to play it. In fact, I think I would challenge you. And if you lose, you buy the second round. Nobody challenges Matt Jackson. <coughs> Let's go. All right, you ready? All right. So you each start with a hell debt of 10 points. Uh, you're going to take turns throwing darts 10 feet from the target. So it's like a ranged attack. Okay. Uh, you must call your target. You can choose either the tongue, the nose, or the horns. The tongue's worth one point. The nose is two points. The horns is three points. If you miss the, the board altogether, uh, your hell debt will go up. So, like, if you if you hit the horns, which are worth three points, your hell debt will go from ten to seven. Okay? So, let's roll initiative to see who goes first. I've rolled low. i got a nine. Initiative? Yeah. Twenty-two. You get to go first. So what do you want? All right. The tongue, the nose, or the horns? I'm, I'm feeling a little horny. Mm -hmm. So I'll go for the horns. Mm -hmm. 
So ranged attack. Here we go. 17. You hit the face of the devil, but not the horns. Oh, so I get nothing? Yeah, Mac Jackson last. Watch and learn. Nose. He misses the nose. Oh, nice. it looks like you did what I did. Jackson. Shut it. Shut it. Looks like I'm doing okay. Shut it. So what do I do? I call out nose and then I roll. Sure. 22. All right. So your held debt went from 10 to 8. So you're winning. Mac Jackson's feeling the pressure. He looks at you. Nose. Fuck. He missed again. Your turn, Ashes. All right. Let's uh, let's get crazy and try the horns again. Uh, it's another 16. Oh, uh, you miss. He goes, yeah. Horns. Son of a... He misses also. Your turn, Ashes. All right, I'll do the nose. 12. 12 uh, misses the nose. All right, Max, turn. He's just like, tongue. <laughs> Hits the tongue! He's at nine now. Um... Rebby hacks and chewing gums like these games usually take a while, so you know. Just <laughs> when there's two people that are horrible at them, yeah, I can imagine. All right, no, here we go. Good. No. She goes. It's just a tough board. This one is smaller than the normal ones. Oh. Uh, Fifteen. You nose? missed the nose. Oh, good God. His turn. Look at that. He hit the nose. And now he's ahead by one. And he hit it right on the nose with a natural 20. Okay. Your turn, Ashes. Before I throw, I want to cast Minor Illusion. Mm -hmm. And I want to make the devil face look like Barzillai Thrun. <gasps> Little motivation. And I call out Horn. 20. All right, you hit the horns. Oh, wait, you, uh, the, yeah, the horns? You got three points, so. He goes, that's not regulation. You can't change the face. Parlor tricks. He's gonna go for the nose. This is, uh, you think you're gonna win. Go ahead, Ashes. It is the same what am, basic what am I at now? Five? You're at five. He's at seven. I'm gonna go for the horns again. Mm. No, go for it. Oh, 13. Misses. He'll go for the horns. Got the horns. It's tied. Five to five. Oh, no. Your turn, Ashes. Nose. 18. That's a power score. You got it. Uh, he's going to go for a... It's, you're winning now. You have three. He has five. He's going to go for the horns. He focuses. He fixes his mullet. He stares at the thing. He's going for the horns. I missed by a mile. Your turn, Ashes. All right. I I'm going to make my minor thing. illusion look really, really nasty and mean. Like it's uh -huh. frowning and scowling. Uh -huh. I'm going to go for the horns for the win. 25. Nice. Wow. All right. You won. And he owes you five silver because that's his held debt that he had. So he coughs oh. up the five silver. He doesn't say anything. And he just... He takes off his, like, fingerless glove, his throwing glove, and he just storms out. And uh, Rebby hacks and says, you got a real talent for this, kid. And Arolana Grind says, you sure this is your first time? Yes. Okay. Raw, you approach Citrona Sabinus. Hmm. She goes, um, are you who I think you are? My name is Raul von Hellrose. You are Savinus. You're friends with, um, Laria Longroad? Yes. All right. She, like, takes you to a back room. And she's going to drop, like, two paragraphs of flavor text on you. You ready? My cousin Octavio is an obstinate and difficult man. But he's also an honorable one. 
He led the Order of the Torrent for a decade, and during that time, they've rescued dozens of missing people and other unfortunates from abduction. The Order's members aren't all stationed here in Kintargo. They work throughout Avistan, after all, and I suppose it's something of a blessing that most of their two dozen or so members were elsewhere when Barzillai made the Order illegal. Those who are outside Cheliacs are certainly lying low, awaiting word from their lictor. But if we can find my cousin, I'm certain he can be convinced to aid the Silver Ravens. He might grouse a bit at your methods, but I know for a fact that he's no supporter of Thrun, and having his network of agents at your disposal can only help, right? Of course. In any You're event... Trained <laughs> yes. In any event... Assuming he's not in the clutches of House Thrun, I think I know where my cousin is. He'd probably hate me if he found out I told you this, but the Order of the Torrent sometimes uses a small shrine just south of the city in the Argo Swamps as a safe house. The place is warded against magical observation, and they've used it in the past as a staging place for smuggling those they've rescued in or out of Kintargo. The place is the Shrine of St. Senex, and if my cousin is anywhere... He's there. All right. We'll take that under consideration. Thank you. Is there anything you want from us? I just want my return for this information. I just want my cousin safe and sound. Mm. We'll try to make it so. So, uh, Rawl, do you re-enter the bar? You see... Yes. Airy, Lana, Grand, like, talking with Theo about fashion. Do you like mm. my hair? I like your hair. Difficult. Not everyone can pull it off. Team <laughs> bearing. I have a lot of product for it. Something you can't pull off, necessarily. Some... You're best off trying what you're doing right now. She goes, oh. Okay. Revy Haxon looks at Essie. What's your story? You look kind of creepy. No offense. I'm eating my chocolate-covered banana. I'm like, I don't know, local <laughs> mortician. Oh. I run a uh, graveyard and crematorium. If you're interested, I could take your measurements. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want that. Not my fault if you wind up in a pine box, then. I'm gonna wind up in a pine box. Well, if you get your measurements taken now, and I hand him a business card, you can upgrade to a top of the line mahogany, or if you would like your pine box to be a bit more. Comfortable, perhaps. You could upgrade to the silk lining rather than just no lining. She goes, There's also linen for mid-grade, but most people, if they're going to go out, they go all out. She says, you know, it would be cool, actually, to have a bed that's a coffin. Oh, yes. The, te the temperature is quite cool. You know. It breathes. Oh. I sleep in one myself. Oh. And, I mean, maybe we could do, like, Dart decorations, you know, because I'm such a big Devil Pin fan. Mm -hmm. Do you like dart stuff? You could have it on the lid of your coffin, so yeah. it's closed. Yes. Yeah. I've done custom coffin lids before. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll see. I'll, 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 I'll think it over. All right. Roll. You uh, tell the group about this thing. She wants yeah. you to go to the swamp. I'm fun about the shrine and the swamp, and yeah possible location of Octavius. Yep. Now I, I can think say we it. should go. We're ready to rock and roll. Mm. Roll just stares at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright. So you're going to head out into the swamp? Oh, lovely swamp. Yes. Mm. If it's not too much of an affront, Lady Fio. I can survive. You might wish to wear some traveling gear instead of your usual gown. Fine. I'll keep it, keep, keep it clean, at least. Well, shall we head off? I'm, I mean, the mm. uh, 
the people here aren't the greatest. And <laughs> it, it <hurt laughs> my image to appear in such dingy qualities. So when we go. Yeah. Head out into the swamp. Right. Heading out into the swamp. Did you know that swamp. swamps are excellent for preserving bodies, corpses, the like? It's I've heard. Very peaty swamp. Mm. You hear a noise. It's a frog. Oh. Ew. You hear a weird bug. You hear flies. Do we? Somebody casts a second level spell. Somebody cast Detect Magic. It's a good one. Wow, Detect Magic is... Sounds like the Star Trek Transporter sim. <laughs> no, it's Detect Magic. <laughs> oh, sorry. I look around for who's casting it. Let me guess. Nobody. Oh. <laughs> you're in the swamp. Um, you're walking around, heading towards a shrine, following her directions. You hear frogs. There's flies. There's. I cast mage armor on myself. You cast mage armor. I okay. do. Um, um muggy... I will. Ra will have his cloak up and around Theo so that the flies are away from her, <laughs> like getting away from her hair and stuff. Yeah, she just looks. She looks. She looks extremely uncomfortable. This is the worst. I see. He's also me taking like samples of like different swamp muds and like peat as we go through to see which ones work best at preserving flesh later when she gets back to her, you know, her funeral parlor. All right. This work. You take a short walk west, um, and up ahead. You see an upthrust escarpment of stone. Uh, the swampy ground between it and you looks like it's safe to travel. Um, as you draw near, you see a two foot wide path that rises up from the marshy ground, leading to what appears to be a heap of stones and driftwood. The mound looks like it has an opening on the southeast side flanked by two poles sporting gouts of fire that dance erratically in the breeze. Hmm. That's not normal for a peat bog. No, well, at least there's a path to walk through there. Is this the uh, the shrine, you think? Hmm. It could be. I would have expected it to be a little bit more hidden, but mm, it matches the uh, location I was told of. Best to explore it. Um, I'll go first. Right. And he'll, um, he'll drop his cloak and, uh, we ready his shield and take out his long sword and move forward. Okay. Let's see. Alright, um... Yeah, as you get close, it looks like there is a ladder leading down. You can hear the sound of dripping water a little bit from below. What's the smell like? Is it the bog of eternal stench? Yeah, it's, it smells, you know, like... Not the bog of eternal stench. You hear, um, from, like, behind some swamp trees, you hear two creatures approaching, sluicing through the swamp water. What? Two things are approaching? What? Yeah. Walking through swamp water, like knee-deep swamp water. Okay. Uh, can can we make them out what they, any more detail what they look like? Yes. It's a man and a woman. The man mm. has got a long beard, and he looks like he's got seashells like wound into it. He's got a long pole, and on the end of it is a huge metal hook. His hair is brown, and there's some gray in it, too. It sort of looks like dreadlocks. And he's got a, sea, a huge seashell hanging from his belt and a potion bottle hanging from his side. And he's got like a little circular pouch thing covering his groin. And he's mm. bare, bare, barefooted. That must be oh. where he keeps his oh, sugar balls. <laughs> they are growing in popularity. 
Greetings and Swelling. salutations. Um, they, they look at each other and they look at you. And they say, Why have you come here? Uh, Ra will turn around to Fio, and then he'll say, "Our business is our own, but we seek, we seek allies." You're trespassing on our property. And who are you that claims property to this swamp? We are mere servants of Anju, the goddess of nature, wielder of the arrow of fate, slayer of Tiamat. In my campaign. And you guilty man. Oh. <laughs> We're just bullshitting you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I uh, hmm. tell this guy not to be so shellfish with his. Oh my god! <laughs> He's on fire. Does she actually Inspiration say that? for ashes. Does ashes say that? Uh, <laughs> I'm done. See y'all. <laughs> We're just we're just here to find a shrine. Shrine. Mm -hmm. Well, if it is the shrine of Saint Senex you seek, you have found it. Oh, good. Oh, we... Good. We wish to enter. There's and pay nothing... our respects to someone who we believe is here. Uh, um, and, and who might that be? Someone whose identity would not be safe to share with a stranger. If we are thinking of the we same... wish no harm to come to this person that we seek. This person has cast their breath upon the stone many times. Long a friend to our shrine. We honor those who honor the watery dead. But I'm afraid you are unknown to us. Oh, I honor the dead. Every day. As much as possible with every action. I'm a mortician. Really? Yes. We are as well, in, in a way. How fascinating. Yes. What techniques do you employ? And I just pull out a notebook. I'd love to share. Um, well, we wrap them in bundles of sailcloth and sew them shut with heavy thread. And lay them respectfully on the cold stone floor. Hmm. Interesting. We've recovered many bodies of drowned sailors. Um, those who have no living relatives end up here at the shrine. Hmm. We're almost out of space, to be honest. Hmm. Interesting. Have you ever considered cremation or branching out and preserving some of them in the swamp itself? Pete is an excellent preservative of, of un undead and or dead flesh. He strokes his beard thoughtfully and he looks at the lady and he says, I like you. I think that Anju is going to decide whether or not you should be here or not. Please descend the ladder, but... Keep your wits about you. Thank you. My God, Rawl, did you hear that? They said they like Essie. Has anyone ever said that before? I like Essie. I mean, similar interests. We all like Essie. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ashes just slinks back. <laughs> back <laughs> you know, when I heard Shrine, I was expecting something, you know, marble. You know, incense. I was expecting dead bodies in a swamp. This is the ideal type of shrine I could have hoped for. So, uh, yeah. They show you an entrance. There's a ladder that goes down. What would you like to do? Oh, Essie will go down it. Yeah, I assume that Essie would be really gearing to go down. <laughs> um, we all turn and look at the ladder and then we turn back and cool. Essie's just gone. Yeah, gone. Once, once she's gone down, then Raw will follow. Um, assuming that he looks back to make sure that Theo is still okay with wanting to go down into a place yeah, like this. She's just, yeah, she's just making kind of like this disgusted face and we'll go down. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if that's too loud. Okay. 
flavor text. The ceiling of this. So the map is on the screen. I also emailed it to you. It is A1. Mm -hmm. There's also an A2. Mm -hmm. um, so you drop into A1 on the left there where there's like a circle. Mm -hmm. you, so you kind of land in a shallow pool of water. The ceiling of this damp chamber is seven feet high, bolstered by square supports of rough-hewn wood. The sh a shallow pool of water lies in the northwest corner of the room, where a rusty iron ladder descends from the hole in the ceiling above. An iron gate blocks access into a corridor to the east. Piles of sail canvas and jumbled coils of rope litter the stony floor, and the walls, floor, and ceiling have been carved to look like wood. Brown paint clings in patches, and it's easy to see how the room may have once looked very much like the hold of a ship. To the west stands a statue carved of, from driftwood, depicting a woman dressed in robes, holding the body of a drowned sailor in her arms. So right next to your ladder is the statue of a woman holding a drowned sailor in her arms. Uh... Yeah, so you all it's come all down. It's just a statue. It's not actually a drowned sailor in her arms. Yeah, it's, it's just a statue. Okay. Any writing on the statue? There is. Um. Oh, there's not writing. Um, she the statue suddenly speaks. And her mouth starts moving. Oh. She says, "Those who would visit the drowned departed." must bring to these lips the gift of lungs bounty, lest my guardian stand before you approach. Oh. I'm guessing that means we breathe into the statue. Yeah. Um, Raw will look at the, the sailor's lips, I guess, and do sort of a CPR rescue breath type deal. So you're going to like the sailor? Yeah, that's the person who would need resuscitation. Okay. Um, well, let's send two things happen. Her. The, the, <laughs> the gateway on the other end of the room slides open, and the coils of rope suddenly animate. <laughs> Sorry, I don't oh, want to Oh, that's some pretty mean rope. You that is there. some mean <laughs> rope. Wow. The rope swirls and forms a rope golem. It starts oh. swinging ropes around and approaches you. I do a lot like the noises. So wow. let's roll initiative. Yep. <laughs> this is why I cast mage armor outside. Good anticipation. Goodness. You're playing at expert level. Oh <laughs> Is it really necessary? <laughs> what? <laughs> Terrify holy. <laughs> what did Fio get? Fio got a 16. What about Essie? Nine! Maybe we could turn the battle music down just a tad. Yeah, too much. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> what? Is, huh? What? What'd you what? say? Better? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. What is the button? What is the the button? That it's what what, what is it? Is it actually Rope Monster point? What is that sound? This. I think this is. I think that's the TPK button. Siren? <laughs> no, Sirenscape has sounds for every section of this adventure. So this is this is the sound for yeah. this thing. That's, oh my yeah. god! This is, this is what this the Rope is, Demon sounds like. Holy. Sorry, Gollum. This is yeah. the Shrine of Saint Senex sound set. So the first was Swampy Land. Then there was Inside the Shrine. And this is the Gollum battle. Oh my sound god! Sound. god. It actually makes All sense. right. Yeah. So. That's a scary noise. This I'm is cool literally the sound. just like I need to hear myself roll. Um. Ashes, what'd you get? Uh, I am at a ten. And raw. I rolled a natural nineteen, so I'm at nineteen. All right, raw. There's this big rope golem approaching you. What do you want to do? Would this, uh, would this rope golem, like, if this were, like, Fallout 4, would it have a skull next to its name so that, indicating it's a pretty tough monster, or what, what would you say? 
Would you say that it's more than 60 feet of rope comprising this rope goal? Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. more than 60 feet. Okay. Was it the old Borders um, games and stuff that was color coded? You know, is it is it yellow, yeah. red, purple? What are we talking about? I mean, I'm just gonna you know wheel my blade and say blade beats rope, and then I'm going to uh, slash it. I think I'm going to I'm gonna use my bonus action to use fighting spirit. So I'll get some temp HP and I'll attack this with advantage. And I have a moder uh, I have a twenty one total to hit. That hits. And I will deal max damage, which I think for him at level four now is 14 slashing damage. Okay, so when you hit it, you feel like you don't didn't do as much damage as you normally could. These ropes seem very resistant to your... Mundane. Resistant to slashing damage, oh no. Or perhaps that. it's magical. That went away. Okay. Is that it for Raw? Alright. So yeah, uh, Raul. that will be it for Raw. Yes. Theo! There's a golem made of rope. Its head is like roughly head shaped, and there's like dark hole where, and then there's glowing redness where the two eyes would be. All right. Um, and it's like got arms, and like rope, like long coils of rope are kind of extending out, and waggling in the air. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, but uh, rope is not my thing. So perhaps you're better off being a wick for some cannon or something like that. Just, just terrifying. Um, this, um, so that's going to be a vicious mockery. Vicious mockery? Do I save for that? It's a wisdom save. Uh, 13? 13 fails. My, it's that last bit that is the most, the scariest. It's just like the weird howling. Yeah. It takes two, uh, two psychic damage and it has disadvantage on its next attack. And Theo is going to back up as far away from this creature, putting herself on the other side of Rawl. Okay. And After Theo is the rope creature's turn that has sounds for its powers. So, it suddenly shoots out three lengths of rope. One goes at Theo, one goes at Essie, and one goes at Rawl. Here's the rope noise. Oh. Let's do the rope screech. <laughs> I'll do the rope slam noise also. Right. Okay, Sophia, it has disadvantage. A rope yeah. shoots and tries to wrap around your neck. Oh. So I plus six. I have to take the worst one too. So 14 and higher. So 14 hit, Theo? 14 definitely hits. He has my armor class. Rope wraps around your neck, starts Ooh. strangling you. So you take 9 damage. Oh. And you cannot speak or cast spells with verbal components. Oh, that's... Oh, that's bad for Bart. That's very bad. Essie! A rope yes. whoosh, shoots out at you. Uh, 21. Yeah, that'll hit. Take 9 points. It's strangling you. You cannot speak and cast spells with verbal components. Brawl, you're the hard one to hit, right? Charge it up. A 21 will do it. Plus six. Natural one, so. Oh. Like, <laughs> it's like a rope shoots out and hits your arm and just putoing. <laughs> it just goes rocketing off. Just the, the neck, other. the neck muscles just repel it. Just like, mm. All right, so it's got <laughs> two ropes out and it's like strangling Theo and Essie, and then it is um, Ash's turn. <laughs> How much do I know about rope golems? In particular, do I think that it might have um, any shred of intelligence to it? Make an arcana. <laughs> That's a six. Yeah, you know. Um, the old rope golem. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not gonna take the chance. I'm going to. So, who's Raw? You're up there, right? 
Um, I'm gonna move in. I guess with some daggers. I it feels like this isn't gonna be the best thing to do, but we'll try it. All right, attack with a dagger. Eleven. Eleven misses the rope column. God. Uh, I'll take a bonus action to do an offhand attack. About a 16. Uh, 16 hits. Right. And I'll do sneak attack. Eleven damage. So your dagger is not magical, right? It is not. So just you stab and you feel like it doesn't do as much damage as it normally would. All right. Is that it for ashes? I just want to move around it so I'm opposite. I want to have it between. Okay. No. Essie, you're uh, you're you've got a rope around your neck strangling you. You know you don't take any damage, but as long as that rope is strangling you, you can't use verbal spell field thingies. You could try to escape it with an escape check. That's an action, but no. You're muted. Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> can I try to... Does it look like... Is it one rope, or is it a bunch of ropes? Just one. Just one? Okay. Um, I'm gonna... Yeah, I think she's gonna try to... Es can I... I don't think I can... No, I don't think a shovel... I don't think bludgeoning damage is gonna get that rope cut, so... I'm gonna just try to escape it. So, either athletics or acrobatics. Let's go with that flex. I'm a strong wizard. Natural 20. All right, you, you free yourself from- I remain surprisingly calm as it's strangling me and I'm just like, find the new slot. <laughs> My sisters were always trying, we were always playing around with trying to, you know, strangle each other, so. Isn't that how you all slept? Like just in nooses? <laughs> 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 It's more like we just constantly pranked each other, like well, someone would wait on the top of the staircase, wait for someone else to walk underneath, let, let like slide through like the lasso down and pull up, and yeah, it. Oh, mom got there, you. yeah. Oh, wow. you, you got me again. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it for Essie? Uh, yeah, that was my action. So yeah, I don't have any bonus actions right now. Ral, your posse is being strangled. What do you do? I unstrangle them. So, so um. Uh, Ra will take his action to grip the rope that's around Theo's neck and wrestle away from her. So I'll okay. use... Is it alright for me to do a grapple check on it? Yeah, Freer? athletics or acrobatics. I will do guidance I'll choose athletics. Uh, let's see, 14. Okay, so you get it free of Theo's neck. <sighs> oh my god. She's just, right. she just like, she's like, just kind of like, on the ground, just kind of like, just catching her, catching her breath. All right, cool. That's my action. All right. Uh, after all is Fio. All right. Um, I am going to. Um, yeah, I went weird. All right. Um, I am going to. Try and uh, use fairy fire on it. So just kind of cover it in mist, in like a glittery, like purple mist. And it has to make a deck save. Deck save. 13? Mm -hmm. uh, 14, I think. So I failed. Alright, um, it can't be invisible, and every attack. On it has advantage. Ah! And I'll, yeah, and that'll be my turn. So you did a fairy fire on it, so it's. <laughs> it's a sparkly rope, Dawn. Yes, it's at least pretty looking now. Alright, so on its turn, um, you know, you guys got the yeah. ropes free, but Christmas the sentient ropes come to are like zoop, and they try again to get Theo and Essie. So, oh my god. Uh, Theo. Does it have to go through Rawl to get to Theo? Because no. he's like right in front of her. No. Okay. Plus six to Theo. That's uh, twenty total. 
Oh, g yes. Tig 9, and you're being strangled. Ooh. Let's see. Okay. Here comes a noose. A natural one. Oh, is... everyone's getting the natural one. <laughs> and then, who do I want? Raw or Ashes? I'll let the dice decide. Ashes! Plus six. So, Ashes. It. A rope wraps around your leg and, like, whoosh, smashes you into a wall. And knocks it. So you're prone, you take nine points of damage. And it's okay. still around your leg. That's it for me. Ashes, it's your turn. You can escape or do whatever. Um, you're not gonna... restrained or anything like that. So. No, I'm just going to take a chance here. I'm going to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Uh, um, the only caveat is that if this thing has four or less intelligence, it's not affected. Four or less intelligence. Let me look. Intelligence. Oh, is it three? That's what right. nothing happens. Uh, yeah, so I guess that doesn't work. Is that um, it for Ashes? Yeah, I think that's probably it. After Ashes is Essie! I'm going to instruct Phantom to assist um, Fio. Like, some kitty claws are going to go, try to go through and try to help her get out. Um, and I... I'm going to, since Rawl's weapon doesn't seem to be doing quite as much damage as we'd like, I'm going to cast a second level magic missile at it. Alright. So. Whoop, that's going to be a bunch of d4s. That's going to be a three. Eight. Eleven. Uh. Sixteen. No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, yeah, five. Seven, yeah, sixteen. All right, lets out a roar of pain and like big smoking holes appear in the ropes. It is. You can hear hurt, the roars. Hurt pretty, hurt pretty badly. <laughs> is that it for Essie? Uh, yes, that is it. Is there a magic missile noise? Not in this set, but there is. Did it? Did it kill the rope golem? I'm afraid not. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Uh, <laughs> yes. Good. All right. After Essie is Raul. Um. All right. Is is the rope strangling Fio still? All right. If I attack the rope, because it's a single rope, um, and hit it and dealt damage, would it free her? Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to hack at the uh, rope that's around, that's between Fio and the rope golem. So I'll attack. I got advantage because of the fairy fire. Uh huh. Natural twenty. Oh. Nice. So I will double dice. Wow. Okay. Twenty-one points of slashing damage. Nice. Have to have. <laughs> okay, so you sever the rope, and uh, magic energy like spews out of the the rope wound. It howls in mm -hmm. pain. It staggers, but it's still up. But Fio, okay. the end holding you, Fio goes limp. It's just a normal rope now. Cool. Is that it for Rawl? Yep. Yeah. Fio, yeah. you're no longer being strangled. Is a rope golem staggered? What do you want to do? I'm going to cure wounds myself. That thing is. So that is 1d8, so I get. 7 hit points, and I am going to use my bardic inspiration to give everybody 5 temps, and they can move around as much as they want. As a, as a reaction, sorry, my um, D and D Beyond is crashed, so I'm kind of going off this as. 
I'm tangled up, can I use... I can't use the reaction to try to escape, I guess. Reaction? No. Is that it for Fio? Mm hmm Oh. It looks like I get to go one more oh. time. Um... Yeah, I'll move. I'll use my reaction to move. No, no, no. I won't use my reaction. I keep it. I keep my reaction. I'm, getting, I'm, back. I'm gonna roll to see who doesn't get attacked using my most hated of dice. The D4. I hate you, D4. One, two, three, four. Three. Ashes, you will not be attacked on this round. Vo. Rope. Sh oh. Plus six. Sixteen. All right. So it, it like wraps around your waist and like smashes you against the wall. You take nine damage. Essie tries to. Oh yeah. Let's see what I get. I know. <laughs> I rolled 25. It wraps around your shovel and it whomps you with your own shovel. Wabong! Ow. And raw. Rude. It's just gonna try to hit you. <laughs> Many have tried. It's really. You have a shield, right? Yes, I do have a shield. Alright, it's gonna try to just make you hit yourself with your shield. <laughs> Alright, plus six. Preferred the strangulation. 18 plus 6. 9 damage. Metal hit. 9. Right. So the, that goes with the temporary, so it gets yeah. 4, yeah? No. Gets reduced, right? Mm hmm. So, yeah. So, All right. So you, so you took 4. Mm hmm. Yeah. But don't you have a thing that also detracts from it, or no? Uh, oh, is it not magical? Mm, I guess Is that not. just normal? Oh, then, yeah, I take one. Because it hits you with your own shield, so... So it's bashing, so I take one instead of four. That's neat. Thanks. Cool. That's just your turn! That. Um... So this thing is still wrapped around my leg. If I... If I slash at the rope that's wrapped around my leg, does that count as an attack against this thing? Yep. That's what I'm going for, then. I have advantage because of the fairy fire? Is that right? Stabby stabby. 24. You hit. Um, five piercing damage. Oh, uh, okay. Hurt? You, 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 you chopped the rope. Okay, uh, my other bonus action offhand. 16. That hits. Uh -huh. Three piercing damage. <laughs> Ah. Is that it for Ashes? That's it for Ashes. Essie! This thing, oh, this thing looks pretty injured, yeah? Yeah, it's... It's uncoiled so many ropes that it's, like, losing its form. Oh, and good. it's got magic wounds in it, and a lot of its ropes are cut. Excellent. It, it is, it's got, like, your shovel, and it's trying to whomp you with it. Yeah, I. It, but it shouldn't have tried to grab my shovel. That's the last straw. Uh, and so, oops, I dropped a d4 on the ground. That's going to come back to bite me later. Um, <laughs> probably literally. Um, I'm going to cast Magic Missile on it again. Uh, uh, that one spell so Let's do second level again. Why not? I had to roll a bunch all at once this time instead of four times. Ooh, that was a good call. Um... Seven, nine, plus thirteen, plus four, seventeen points. Your oh, missiles damn. shoot across the room, strike it, strike it in the chest, and it lets out one final roar, and it just <gasps> collapses into a pile of coiled it, it, ropes. It dies? Yes. I get HP back! Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Grim Harvest. Uh, uh, uh. And the sounds of battle are replaced with the Inside the Shrine sound set. Available on Sirenscape.com. I get 4 HP. <sighs> oh my god, what was that? <sighs> I believe it was a rope golem. Oh. Let's hope we don't see any more of those. I can't, I can't breathe. Oh. 
Um, Rawl helps Fio to her feet if she's still down in the water. If not, mm-hmm. he'll just kind of put an arm on her shoulder and say, you'll, you'll make it through. Yeah. Would you like me to teach you some neck strengthening exercises so that it doesn't snap if you get hung or that would strangled? Actually be nice. Right. Might need a second. Later, in the chopper, <laughs> someone walks in on Fio and Essie like strangling each other. <laughs> oh, no. They're just kind of hanging from nooses and they're like, what? We're just hanging out. <laughs> oh, oh, very good. It's good. It's pretty good. <laughs> All right. You're in the shrine. There was a gate blocking your way, but it opened when Rawl immediately figured out the statue thing, like right away. Two seconds. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what can I say? Great. It's yeah. excellent play. That's what Gary Gygax would call that. Excellent play. Well done. Grab my shovel back. I, f- I felt like when it instantly summoned a rope golem, though, I felt like I'd missed a step. <laughs> like if I had been more cautious, I would have well, not done that. Up from above, you hear them talking. Well, the rope golem showed up anyway. I guess Angie wanted to mess with them. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> How do you figure it out okay. so fast? I don't know. We were right to let them in. Next next time, Rawl, I'm thinking just take your time. Make it seem like you talk about it really hard. I've offended the gods by just knowing. I mean, Rawl, Rawl is, a na- is supernaturally good at puzzles. He solved the puzzle in the um, in the museum. Super fast. I can't. I can't help it. I can't sit on it, even if I'm playing a dumb character. That's why I don't play dumb characters. That's all right. It's good. It's good. Um. So yeah, that hallway is okay. clear. Tell yeah. Uh, anything hallway. else of note in the room? Mm. Quick old investigation. Um. Uh. No. Just ships, okay. ship stuff, ropes, that kind of stuff. Canvas. Um, Lady Fio, are you recovered enough? Or are you all right? Is everyone all I'm, right? I'm still alive. I think I'll I'll be fine. Okay. Oh, what, what, one moment, and I will. <laughs> I'm gonna cast false life on myself. <laughs> ah, which gives me one d four plus four temporary HP for an hour. So, yeah, I'm going to cure wounds myself again. Ugh. Yep, all right. Eight. I'm doing okay. I just swirl some green energy from my skull and patch myself up like a little armor. There we go. Raw looks to um, ashes and just says, casters. Oh, wait, now you're one. <laughs> Just looks around, just goes, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Raw, you're raw by I'm, yourself. Uh, I'm raw by myself. Raw uh, by myself. <laughs> Don't want to be. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. I don't play bards either. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go down the hall? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We haven't found any bodies yet. It leads to A2 on the map. This seven-foot-high vault contains over three dozen human-shaped bundles of sailcloth, each wrapped tightly, sewn shut with heavy thread, and laid respectfully side by side on the cold stone floor. A shallow pool of water lies in the southeast corner, while in the northeast corner of the room, someone has set up a camp. I check all of the bodies to see if any of them are still breathing or if any of them are showing signs of undeath. Um. Hmm. All right, you. So you start checking the bodies. As far as you yeah. can tell, they are, they are dead, dead. Okay. What's everybody else doing while Essie's checking the bodies? Somebody set up a camp, but there's nobody there. There is somebody there. <laughs> I just ignore them, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's not surprising. So. <laughs> I 
And, and she looks really happy to be with so many dead people. He's a human with short, blonde, reddish blonde hair. He's got scars, and he's got some really awesome armor. You know, Octavius? He stands Octavia? up. He stands up, looks at you, and nods, holding his weapon in his hand. I'll sheath my sword. He says, These shrouded bodies are those of drowned sailors with no living relations, given a place of honor down here by the grace of St. Senex. He turns to face you with open arms and says, Those who seek Octavio Sabinus have found him. His safe capture, however, is no certain thing. We don't seek to capture you. We seek to ally with you and join you in a common cause. He lowers his weapon. What would the the common cause? What would that be? Against Barzillai throne and the safety of Kentargo, the freedom from tyranny and the restoration of your order. says how Barzillai Thrun runs Kintargo. He he has an army at his disposal. He has devils yeah. serving him. How are you four going to stop him? Not just us four. We intend to bring up a revolution underneath him. Slowly but surely we, the Silver Ravens, have been gathering supporters. Our numbers increase week by week. With you and your order as allies, another force of veterans of a struggle will join us until eventually, before Barzillai knows it, he has a true enemy, a capable foe, right at his doorstep. He looks at each of you and he says... You are certainly hopeful idealists, but in my experience, passionate revolutionaries lack discipline. Like my cousin, you have good hearts, but it takes more than heart to stand up for what's right. If I'm to throw in with the Silver Ravens, I need two things. First, I need to know that my surviving armagers are safe. Second, I need to know that the Silver Ravens are more than thugs who seek to fight in the streets. I need to know that you can exercise subtlety and work at least partially within the bounds of the law to solve problems when such an option exists. As it so happens, this is a perfect chance for you to accomplish both goals. Mm -hmm. Go on. I know that four of my armagers are being held in a holding house in Kintargo. If you could free them, then I will join your rebellion. Will you help us? Or are you simply going to observe us? Observe you. And if I like what I see, then I will help you. I look at I look at Rawl, it's like is this worth it? Just kinda of give you like that that like look. He's a hell knight. That's not an easy title to attain. But I've heard of a torrent. They're different from the order that I was a part of, the order of the rack. They operate Using different methods. Well, you know what? Having one of you around has been certainly a beneficial. Having two of you around can only double that. So. Hmm. All right, Octavio, you want to see what we can do? Fine. We'll rescue your armor treasures. But you'll hold to your word. You'll join us and lend your Hell Knights to our cause. You have my word. 
Until that time, I will remain here at the Shrine of St. Senex. Okay. Hmm. You're lost. We have a nice safe house. Uh, but if you want to hang around with the dead people, that's your that's perfectly fine. This is the perfect place to head out. Smooth the sailcloth over one of the corpses. Mm-hmm. Fix the stitching on another one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Alright. So you uh, want to do anything else here? Theo does not. Like, no, no, there's nothing else to do here. She stepped foot in here and got strangled by a rope monster, so she wants to leave as soon as possible. Okay. okay. So are you going to return to Kintargo? Yeah. yeah. As he promises the corpses that she'll be back. Um, all right, so you make your way from A2 back to A1. And you see the two seers like poking the pile of ropes. Like, oh, I guess. you know about that? Hmm? I asked them, did you know about that? And send us willingly down here. And you test people in mysterious ways. Sometimes she's most unpredictable. After all, her lover is the primal spirit, Stormhawk. Lightning sound. Kapow, pow. Rawl snorts derisively and continues on. <laughs> Unimpressed. Can we burn the rope so that doesn't happen again? Sure. May I claim a piece of this rope so that I will have something to remember this temple by? I think I'll remember this temple for long enough without. Sure. Are I'd like gonna... to take a 60 foot rope segment. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to take like, <laughs> a like all of it. Like a new no, part. I mean, yeah, I love the news at the we end. Burn, we burn a little bit that's like this. And the there was a ton of rope. There was big, big this is a material component I need for a spell. Sure. It is. I got rope trick when I looked oh, up. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right, so you're returning to the city. Mm -hmm. Let me see if they have uh, the 10th proclamation. Oh, another one? God, you can like scare the shit out of Theo like when they just like animate a rope to like this. Alright. It feels like that golem. That's just... weird. They don't have Proclamation 10. They have 9. All right. Obviously, 9 was more important. I guess so. Proclamation 10. There will be no more graham crackers with your s'mores. <gasps> No. Proclamation 10. These mint packets are quite nice. Looks all of Kintargo. All right. So, <laughs> return to the all city. All condiments must be in packets. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, there's a new proclamation that has been issued. Oh, my God. Return to the city. Really? Possession of poetry or prose written by the following authors is hereby forbidden and punishable by a fine of 100 gold pieces or imprisonment. Boss with the Bard, Charletta de Vanip, Genrail of Vire, Theo, and God damn it. the anonymous miscreant who calls him or herself the Poison Pen of Kintargo. All documents bearing the writings of these miscreants must be turned over to the Nitari before destruction by sundown. Any performance, live performance, must immediately be reported to the proper authorities so that they can be detained and arrested. How's your singing skills, Raw? Getting better. I could perform a dirge. I'm quite familiar with several. <laughs> well, this is the last straw. Takes my house, takes my the opera house. Now I can't sing. Now there's no mint. Can we just burn him? This is why you should invest in a career that's never going to go out of business. Art never goes out of business, just temporarily stalled. Neither does Mortician. Hmm. I'll save... I'll save... Can you save one for Thrune once I'm done with him? Of course. I've, I've already marked that spot, the plot. I mean, Alright, so... This guy really ruined our plans for the three-legged devil. 
All right, so we will... Just thrown in our side. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh All my right, God. we're going to stop there. We'll pick it up next week uh, when we do some plugs. Sean, you got any plugs? Yes. Um, so um, tomorrow I will be on um, part of uh, Grant Ellis' stream for charity for um, suicide prevention on um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. So I think that's on the WebMD mm -hmm. channel. WebDM. WebDM. Sorry, my awesome. WebDM. Yes. Um, and then um, on Monday, it'll be – I'm playing in uh, Greyhawk channel on um, – Six, at 8 30 p.m against the giants where we have been killing a lot of giants and accruing a lot of npcs that we care about and i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure our dm's gonna kill them at some point so enjoy it thanks lindy you got any plugs why have any plugs first of all not this sunday but next sunday is rpgx so you should submit clips especially wonderful things i might go back through this episode and clip some you know sugar balls and stuff like that i don't know who knows we'll find out it'll be great rpg in um monday at 2 p.m eastern you should check out my channel for the third and final installment of our blood plague trilogy pretty sure i'm gonna be murdering some people that are party members because i'm a warlock patron who's kind of clinically insane it's gonna be great um and then tuesday evening you should check out my channel as well for uh Mists of Ravenloft, super duper spooky, super duper fun. A soul kraken is currently trying to eat the ship up my level two players are on. It's gonna be a great time. You should check it out. Awesome. What about Garrett? Garrett, do you have any plugs? Hey, just you know, rapping. Nine PM. It's Ramrod Dude. It's Come hang out. Forty minutes. Yeah. Hey. We're having a special guest on this episode, aren't we? I think we are. Very special. <laughs> Might be the first time we have a five-player party in the Dungeon of Graves. Mm. Although one of the prereqs for joining the party is to, you know, give a little rap. Oh. No pressure. Mm. Mm. Whoever it is needs 40 minutes to think about that. <laughs> Ryan, yeah. Ryan, do you have any plugs? Are you going to uh, be on anything you, think, tonight? Uh, can't remember. Uh, probably. No, I'll be, I'll be a special guest on... Uh, Wrap an Athok and I'll try not to step in a pit and uh, don't step um, in a pit. Uh, maybe just uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't want it to be a surprise. So if you want to see what's going to happen and uh, what I can add to this little mix, uh, come watch us at nine o'clock Eastern Garrett's channel. It'll be fun. Um, maybe I'll wrap. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe so I will. on Garrett's channel, it's Ramrod, dude. On Twitch, I'll be there playing Brock Netherstorm. And with a fifth person, we'll we'll have an easier time filling the pee pit. So uh, we're going to do that. And then okay. tomorrow, uh, looks like there's no Dungeon Academy. A couple players can't make it. But I think we're going to be playing a special game. I'm not sure who's running it. But um, I'm going to get to use my clown bard. My, I have Froth oh Crumpton. Oh my god, yes. The yes. depressed clown who's oh. monkey committed suicide and he's oh all god. messed up about it. He doesn't care about anything anymore. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I'll get to, I'll get to yes. that. And, and it's a special holiday show. It's perfect. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Why is that perfect? Because. <laughs> oh, and so, don't forget, Dice Camera <laughs> Action will be on Tuesday. They're having two special guests. James Intracasso and James Hick. Who wrote, um, you know, Waterdeep Dragon Heist? Guess who's going to be a guest on Waffle Talk on Thursday? James oh, Intracasso yes. and James J. Hick, the people who wrote Dragon Heist. Oh, hey. So cool. tune in to Waffle Talk Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to ask them all about the game that they played, and we'll probably pick their brain about the Dragon Heist and what it's like doing stuff for Wizards of the Coast in a major capacity. We're going to be rubbing elbows. Just like we did at PAX Unplugged. When when Shauna, Garrett, and I got to play a game at a table with Lisa Chen, Greg Lescaflair, who is a DM's Guild adept, and he wrote Esper Genesis, which we were playing, and Web DM Jim, who we, and, and the nerd Archie Dave. It was, it was awesome. So, uh, yeah, good times. Thanks, everybody, for watching. So we'll see you again soon. Um, and, and if you can, 
jump in in about a half hour on It's Ramrod Dude. We're all going to be there. Kind of hopefully not ruining his dungeon, but, you know, definitely kind of ruining it a little bit. So we ruined it. It's, a, it's a pee pit. It's it's <laughs> a pee pit. It's ruined. I mean, it's it's sorry. We defiled it. <laughs> hopefully the the people who made rap and Aztec won't see what we did do. <laughs> We we're going to delete the videos as soon as we're done. <laughs> so if you don't show up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye.